Okay. Well, uh, my name is Michael. At the time of this recording, I'm an associate pastor um, over to Subship and Music for the Tularosa Community Church. Um, this class is what we wrote for our new members as a as a. Um, it was originally meant to be a 12-week repeatable um, discipleship course, um, but as it evolved, it has become multiple weeks, um, and so we saw the benefit of uploading it so that way um, people could go back and, and rewatch it um, and to make sure that they fully understood what was being said uh, or to uh, recap on what was being said. Um, on the blog, which is listed in the um, in the details under the YouTube channel, um, it has has these sheets, which I will make, which I will post up on there with each video, um, basically giving an outline of the course. So if you want to follow along as well, if you didn't have a chance or if you don't go to our church, um, but basically it was just to make sure that the, that the new members who came in were on the same page, they understood where we were going, what we believed, that kind of idea. Idea. Um, we are, we are an Assemblies of God church. Um, but uh, they're, you know, going past what has been called the 16 fundamental truths. There are there are other things that, that um, we felt were more application centered um, rather than uh, doctrine centered. Um, and, and so we wrote this course to be a benefit to um, to the new member um, for for the books that we used. And I highly recommend if you have the time uh, to go check them out. Um, we strongly de depended on, um, excuse me, um, a man by the name of Bill Gothard. Um, in fact, a good majority of the stuff in this class will be based off of, off of his um, his writings and his various teachings. Um, one of the main books that we that we um, use is this book right here. Um, it's called The Institute and in Basic Youth Conflicts. Um, it's despite its name, it is applicable to all ages, not just the um, not just youth. Um, it is a very, very good, very good book, timeless in my opinion, um, and it, just very, very in depth. Uh, we'll be using a lot of that, but then also he has what's called the Men's Manual. Um, there's two volumes to it, but I highly recommend it if you can find it to get it. Um, at the time of this recording, he is still doing seminars um, and teaching stuff online. Um, so I, I highly recommend you look that up. His name is Bill Gothard. Um, that's G-O-T-H-A-R-D. Um, we will be using some other um, other uh, textbooks for this course. Uh, nothing that you need to you know buy unless you should want to. Uh, one is by uh, the theologian Wayne Grudem. It's called Systematic Theology. Um, we do lean on um, um, Bible doctrines by. Uh, uh, Horton and I think Menzies, um, obviously the Bible, um, and and the other books I'll, I'll try and I'll try and give reference to as I mention them, um, but the deception course or the new membership course is called Growing in Christ, and so every time whenever we're teaching it um, in person, uh, we go through this list of things. Um, at the beginning of each of the of the lessons, and what it is is it's actually adapted almost exactly word for word, though, but it has minor modifications um, from a, a list that Bill Gothard had written. Um, so, ten values which protect families from destructive influences, and those destructive influences are wrong desires, false thoughts, uh, and evil relationships. Um, basically, you know how. how how can you how can you have bearing as a family? How can you know where you're going when you're supposed to be doing that kind of stuff? Um, number one, God alone is sovereign, and the Bible is His inspired word and the final authority for my life. Now, as we go through these, a lot of them will be touched on throughout the discipleship course um, in different ways and, and teaching you different ways to to do these things. Uh, but God alone is sovereign, so He's in control. He's not. He's basically the center of life. And the Bible is his inspired word and the final authority for my life. Um, number two, my purpose in life is to seek God with my whole heart and to build my goals around his priorities. Um, seeking God is not about going to church on Sunday. Seeking God is about a lifestyle of pursuing him. You know, it's not like God has his box and then you have your other boxes. 
It's here's all the things that encompass your life, and God is at the center of all of it. Um, number three, my body is a living temple of God and must not be defiled by the lusts of the world. Um, if you read through Leviticus, um, without going too much into how to understand the Old Testament, because we do have other classes and videos for that, um, think of yourself as the temple, um, the tabernacle from Leviticus, and see how holy they treated that that physical um, tabernacle. And, and now ask yourself, do I treat my body as though it is holy to the Lord, his tabernacle? Or do I treat it um, like I am, a, I am my own boss? Um, so number four, uh, my church must teach the foundational truths of the Bible and reinforce my basic convictions rather than appealing to what feels good. If your church is only saying things that tickle your ears, that um, are not biblical, um, that um, are not um, God-centered, it's a good chance that um, you may be in, in, in a not very good church. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna. We'll get more into that uh, later on throughout the discipleship courses. Be aware of what you're allowing in your life, and be aware of what you're believing in your life. Um, but your church must teach the foundational truths. It's not so, your church is not supposed to teach things that make you feel better about you, or to make you um, um, that, that you don't learn anything from. You know what I mean? If you are never learning something at church, or never teaching something at church, if if it's only there for your entertainment sake. Um, there, there may be a problem. Um, so number five, my children and grandchildren belong to God, and it is my responsibility to teach those scriptural principles, godly character, and basic convictions. Now, I'm not saying that you have to dictate every aspect of your child's life. That's not what I'm saying at all. But it is your responsibility as a parent and a grandparent to teach them and to train them in the way that they should go. That 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 you that you um, that you give them a chance to understand the truths of God. Give them a chance to, to, to believe and interact with the Bible. A lot of times, especially in Christian households, we just expect our children to be saved rather than treating them like, like they're our mission field. Remember, if you are a parent, your kids and your grandkids, that's your first mission field. That's your first ministry. Um, and I know that sometimes it's hard and, and sometimes things don't go real well with parenting. Uh, but just don't give up. Uh, your children and grandchildren belong to God and it's your responsibility to teach those scriptural principles, God the character and basic convictions. <clears throat> Number six, my activities must never weaken the scriptural convictions of another Christian. Basically, I can't ever do anything that is going to hurt my Christian brother or sister. I, I have to always remember that the two greatest commandments is love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and don't ever forget that. You know, a lot of times we justify things, saying it's okay. But if we actually ask ourselves, what is it weakening the scriptural convictions of another Christian? So, <clears throat> um, number seven, my marriage is a lifelong commitment to God and also to my spouse. Um, I know in today's culture, marriage is kind of, you know, whatever. You sleep around people and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um but really, that's not that's not the image that, that God wanted, you know. And and the world makes it out as though it's it's a good thing, you know. Hey, this person has more experience. I have never met somebody who had the experience that was a whole person. The more you sleep around, the more you give away pieces of yourself, and the more you build up rejection in the heart of your spouse. And what I mean by that is when you sleep with your with someone before you marry them. It builds up this sense of of a, of a lie in your in your relationship. First off, the woman, if you're a man, the woman won't respect you. She won't she won't think that she won't be able to trust you. She'll she'll think that you're only interested in her looks, and she'll constantly be gravitated towards that aspect. Um, and then for men. Um, you'll be constantly geared towards sex, and you'll 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 fall into the idea that your marriage is based off 
off of sex, off of an attraction. What happens when that attraction is gone? What happens when 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 you find someone more attractive? What happens when there's just so many different different um, aspects of that that are just so so terrible? And um, now is a perfect time to plug this in. Um, in this in this Bill Gothard book, he has a great section at the end about what happens with the destructive influence in our in our marriage when we when we lean towards um, sexual encounters before the marriage. Remember, sexual immorality is not homosexuality. Sexual immorality is any sexual encounter that is not what is condoned by God and His Word. And that is between a husband and wife. That's, that's it. It doesn't matter if it's heterosexual or homosexual. It's against God's Word unless it's bound in marriage between one man and one woman. So, um, that, um, my, um, my marriage is a lifelong commitment to God and to my spouse. Don't give up. Don't give up. Um, number eight, my money is a trust from God, trust from God, and must be earned and managed according to scriptural principles. I must earn money and manage money according to what God wants. We'll talk about this more. There's a lesson I believe it's number four that it, that's it's financial finances and talks about all this all this different stuff. Um, but but as a trust from God, you are you are a steward with everything you have uh, to handle things in the right way. And uh, number nine, my words must be in harmony with God's word, especially when we're proving and restoring a Christian brother. I must always say the right thing with the right attitude. But if you know anything about yourself, you'll know that uh, you are human and you will mess up. So, you know, with that, you know, I'm not saying perfectionism here. I'm saying, you know, that that's our that's our responsibility. Um, and and as you fall, just keep getting up, keep trusting the Lord, keep seeking after Him. Your words must be in harmony with God's word. And a little side note, if you're going to be reproving or restoring your Christian brethren, we'll talk about this more, but spend adequate time in prayer beforehand so you can have the mind to do it. It's not good enough to just have the words. You have to have the mind. So number 10, my affections must be set on things above, not on things in the earth. Um, a lot of times uh, we have problems in life because our, uh, we love things of the earth, not things um, that God loves. You know, how come I don't feel fulfilled at my work? How come I, um, how come I, I, I feel like I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to do? Be doing all this different stuff that, 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 that we guilt trip ourselves on and takes up all of our all of our thinking. When the truth is, my affections must be set on things above, not on things in the earth. Um, so with that, um, throughout the lesson, it's it's 12 lessons. But I may break it up into more than that videos. It just depends on how long they go. So as we study, learn how the lesson applies to you, not others. Um, oftentimes when we're going through classes like this, um, we, 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 we're constantly thinking about this other person who this would be perfect for. Our kids or our spouse or our, you know, fill in the blank, our friend or our enemy or whatever. If they could just, you know, whatever. But as we study, learn how it applies to you. Learn how it can, how you can relate with it. How you can, how you can analyze that content. Um, with that, we're going to stop. This was just an introduction to the discipleship class. Um, if you are a new Christian, it, hey, if, if it, 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 there's stuff in here for everyone. Uh, if you are been saved for a while and you just feel like you're at a plateau, or if you're growing and, and you want to keep growing, I mean, really, this class is for anybody. Um, like I said, it was meant for our new members, but it's also just a good all-around discipleship class that doesn't talk about just the head knowledge so much as how that applies to us. Um, uh, with that, I thank you very much for watching. Um, we will be posting up the other videos within the, within the next coming weeks, and I really hope you enjoy them. Remember that all the all the sheets and everything will be uploaded uh, to the um, to the blog, which is listed um, on the YouTube. If you go under the video, it has that description. You click on that, and it'll say the it'll say the blog and all that. Um, thank you for watching.